taking his time with his field places the crowd's getting very edgy four runs off six balls well straight to shorten it off four runs he's got to go for it son uh, Donald comes down to have a chat run for anything son Campbell hit a four this ball he'll go over the top he's going to drop any back no he's not he's bringing another man in the mid wicket's coming in to watch him it's coming to short cover so there's now a man going to gully point short cover mid off mid on short mid wicket square leg deep fine leg and a deep third man Flex it down a fine leg for single a gun on strike a big bye Is strange he hasn't got anybody out for Simon O'Donnell in front of the member stand he's pushing the square leg down to deep forward square leg so there's three men out on the onside and now the gully is coming across to the onside Amir Malik going to so Inman's going to angle this into Simon O'Donnell's pads, probably go for the Yorker. Three to win. Close, he's got in, he's come. Oh, what a finish. England gets Simon O'Donnell LBW with three runs for victory. The end of a fine innings, three balls to be bowled, three runs, and Cole Rackerman will make his way to the wicket. What a finish, what a match. Fine innings from Simon O'Donnell, out for 39. And in the final over, taking his time with the field pace, and England slowed the game down. Caught Simon O'Donnell hitting across the line. The ball seemed to straighten a little bit. He was well back. And umpire Peter McConnell, well, he's given a couple. And at crucial stages, so. I don't mind that sort of umpiring. The longest walk ever for Carl Rackman. 24,000 people here on the edge of their seats. And big Carl, his mouth beginning dry by the second as he takes guard. Well, the last time Carl Rackman would have been involved in a situation like this was back in 83-84 in Melbourne against the West Indies. And he got run out of the last ball to create a tie. Short mid-wicket, backward square leg, and a deep fine leg and a deep mid-wicket. Emran Khan to Carl Rackerman. Swing and a miss. Oh, the pressure mounts. Wasn't a good delivery. Wasn't a good shot. 37 years of age, a veteran. And the leading wicket takers in one day internationals. He's not sure himself. Drops back mid off. Not going to concede the two. He won't be all the way to the fence. The pressure really on the outfielders here. If they go through for the second line, in comes Imran Khan. Ball in! Wow, what a finish. Rackerman, clean bowled by Imran. One ball to be bowled. Two runs for victory, and it's going to be the veteran Terry Alderman to face the music. What a finish. Nine for 218. a replay and a tremendous save. Terry is not the best batsman in the world. He's got to get bat on ball. He's got to get a nick. He's got to get something. They've got to get two runs. And Inman's going to drop the men back to three-quarter way to the fence, which is the obvious thing to do. Let's have four inside the circle. Okay. His highest score is nine not out, so he certainly got the ability to score runs. Don't know how many balls that was off. But even when Terry slogs over Zeta, it's been going for about 10 minutes now. In a team meeting between Alderman and Campbell. He can't look. Was an Akram not playing this match at the door. There'll be two in a row here at the Sydney Cricket Ground for Pakistan if they win this match as Alderman takes guard. 
in the car at home the Pakistan manager he's been he's feels me in a couple of places at deep mid wicket fine leg still on the fence third man still on the fence as Imran comes in for the final delivery where is Jarvis Oh, the 12th man, Shohab Mohammed's coming out on the field. There was a message, he's been sent back. <laughs> That's all happening at the Sydney Cricket Ground, and there's nobody at mid-wicket. The last delivery from Imran to Terry Alderman. And he's missed it. So it's all over. A great victory for Pakistan, a real quick hang on by two runs. So Australia requiring nine out for 218 chasing